Just another day at the church back lot. Robbie's here to help us. We got a clutch. We got a clutch. We got to stick it to a motor and trans that's in the trunk. And uh, yeah, that made this another episode of Car Rat. Here we go, boys. So, this is a clutch I picked up from a local auto zone. It's just something to get it going. Very odd configuration, in my opinion. But, uh, yeah. That like, means we don't need a alignment tool. We don't. That's why I didn't come with one. It's an interesting setup. Normally, a clutch, if Robbie could demonstrate, comes in three separate parts where there's a disc in the middle, the pressure plate there, and then you bolt all that to a flywheel that is already bolted to the, the engine. On this setup, it's a ring gear that attaches to a flywheel that is all one contiguous piece, which is why you don't have to take anything apart. Makes this job very easy. It just also means that there's like zero information out there for people who don't know this. <laughs> Seriously, I spent like three hours trying to find out what I need for that, only to find out, oh yeah, no, it's supposed to come with one whole kit, so. There you go, the more you know. So this just goes straight up. Straight up here, one bolt, rotate a little bit, one bolt, rotate a little bit. And just keep on going bit. all the way around. We yep. also have the plate to cover that up. That's sitting in the back of the Eclipse, so cool. All right, well, I guess we'll set that in there. We gotta make a laundry list and then go to the parts store. Opening this door up, he and I just sat down and looked at this mess right here. He has everything labeled, individually bagged, saying what it goes to where it goes to as he was just pointing out this actually bolts together like it would on an automatic we're just double checking bolts making sure everything's good we don't have any cross-threaded bolts or anything like that that way we can move on because yeah this is this is nuts what we can tell the timing is solid there's no no weird sounds happening there no inability to release compression or anything like that so we're definitely seeing spot-on results in that area all in all i think we actually got ourselves like a really good build to sit here and do some fun stuff with in the future and all that all right after running all over loudon county and a little slight venture into the border of fairfax county we now have everything we need to at least oh. do all the fluids we have a torque wrench so we're going to get the uh flywheel set up that's 55 pounds so that's fairly straightforward. I'm gonna try and get at least some of the belts and the wires and everything ready to get everything put together. This is a lot of prep work. <laughs> that's really what it is, because we need our hoist and we need a lot of tools and Ian has got both of those things. So we're just gonna try and get what we can done, done. I think one of the things we need to do is get everything out of the passenger bay into the trunk so that the trunk can become an operating table and then obviously get the clutch thing done, yeah. We're, we're winging this. <laughs> we're winging this for sure. So for like the past half hour, I've been out here just getting stuff done with this brake clean. Clean this trans up so that it's not so dirty, nasty, and gunky, and that way we can read things. Turns out this actually does not have an LSD in it. We just kind of looked at it wrong, and it looked like it was when we were looking at it super late at night with no light. This is actually an MVT350, which not the best thing ever, but it'll do the job for us right now. It's basically the same trans that you'd find in like the Turbo Chrysler PT Cruiser. Uh, a Neon ACR had this. A couple other models had something like it. It's sturdy enough because it's a new Ventures for a good amount of power, but we'll run it until it decides to die, honestly, because it's just, it's a decent trans, but it's not like an Evo trans or anything crazy like that. We just took the oil pan off. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't realize there's still oil in the block, but, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it means I'm going to have to clean out that truck bay again. Oh well, it'll be easier this time. That looks really healthy, apparently. What do you think, Senor Robbie? I don't nice. see any metal flake. That's it looks, good. looks golden. It kind of almost looks like the... Uh, do you have a flashlight? B20 did. It kind of does look like how the B20 did, actually. The B20 was dumb clean when we yeah, took we, everything It was off, super healthy. This one... I'll give it a... Compared to that... This is like, if that was an A, this is a B. I'm gonna be honest, like I'll rate this one like maybe a seven and a half out of 10. So yeah, definitely a B, B worthy score. Yeah. Oh wow. 
What is that toothy boy on the outside there? I've never seen that before. That's interesting. Which one? That must be an oil collector. Oh. Pull into the crank? Um, no, that's for your crank shaft position. Ah, oh. that's what that is. Yeah. Good call. All right, we're learning today, kids. Hey, look. It's very clearly a DSM. Hey, <laughs> for the gram. Yeah, where did it go? I just lost. There it is. Ta da! <laughs> well, Looking at the oil in a pan, that is like beautifully clean, even though it's old oil, clearly. It's, there's no shiny bits, there's no, you know. This one doesn't count, because it came off pennies. my finger. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was him. <laughs> or that Huge one. shout out to you. But yeah, this is looking oh, pretty healthy, fellas. We just gotta find a place to put the rest of that in there, too. Unlike what we did with those sensors in the car. <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting. All right, day two of this project and process. Yesterday, honestly, we didn't do a whole lot, but most of our day was spent analyzing what's going on with the car and kind of just going over everything, making sure that we have all the bits and pieces that we need, taking stock of everything, getting the fluids we need ready, and just all in all making sure that when we go to put everything into this Eclipse next to me, we can actually make sure that everything is there, it's correct and accurate. It was basically just drawing up a battle plan saying, hey, this is what we're gonna do, this is how we're gonna do it, and this is what it's gonna be like when it's done, or at least the result that we should have when we're done. With none of the guys here, I gotta say, like, I feel really good about this car. And they're probably gonna watch this episode. They've probably heard me say this, but I just have a really, a really good feeling about this car and everything going on with it because, A, it's been good to us so far. We haven't had any issues yet. Uh, B, it was really well taken care of, even though it is messy right now. It just needs a nice cleaning, detailing, maybe some fresh rotors if those ones are bad enough, stuff like that. It just looks like a lot of surface rust on the brakes for now, so we'll see how that goes. But all in all, just a really nice, clean setup is what I'm seeing here. And it just gives me hope that this project will not be like that one, unfortunately, was. Because We've had nothing but problems with this particular car. And it's just, you know, sometimes you gotta move on from an old project, let that go to someone else, move on to a new one. Right now I am waiting on Robbie and one of his buddies to show up so that we can sit down and go get our hoist so we can begin the process of mating the trans to the engine block and possibly even lowering it into the car. I know it sounds like a little bit of a stretch, but if it can get it out of the back of the Civic, it means that we can clean the back of the Civic because we just had a bunch of oil spill in it last night when we checked the gas uh, gasket for the oil pan. But it also means that we can focus solely on the shell and making the shell get all of its connections plumbed back together, putting in the rad, getting all that situated. It just allows us to move forward rather quickly if we can get the engine in this car today. I don't think I've fully expressed how much I love the previous owner because everything is in those little bags. It is so much easier to find things. If I ever have a project car and I have to take it apart, I'm copying what that man's did. <laughs> Cause that is so helpful. One here. All right, here, so Getting the trans mated like now. Just kind of going over everything, making sure things are solid. So far things are going as we expected. We just gotta make sure that the motor mounts are ready inside of the chassis itself. That's for go from there really impressed with our crew right now because Ian and I are over here getting the engine put back together getting all the attachments and brackets done Robbie's under the car getting the subframe or at least what we would call a subframe bolted on to the actual chassis of the car that way when we go to put the motor in here in a few minutes we'll be able to actually lower it in what do you think of this thing so far bro I mean it looks clean it's good we know the engine's good we just got to make sure that we can get ourselves some new headers. We found out that those headers actually have a very big, I mean, if you big look, heat crack. Somebody, Someone's already tried to sync it back together. So, needless to say, that guy is done for. So we'll definitely get some new headers in the future. Again, as I said to these guys earlier, with this project, it's not as do or die as the Civic was. Because that was my only car at the time. Now I have the Rev. So now I can have an actual, like, relaxed project. The only rush is that we have to kind of clean this area, get all the oil picked up and whatnot that's spilled, and try to make that car ready to be, well, sent. So, I leave for 30 minutes to go get parts and order starters and whatnot. I come back and... Legends. 
it's all him. Yeah, it really I, is. I, I hate to say this, but I kind of expected that. <laughs> so, thank uh, you, Craig. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm more impressed that it's in there, like in there, in there. It's holding it on. How's that one motor mount on that side? Did you find the nuts for it, or? We got possible spares. We don't have a bolt for the front one. We don't have one for the front or the back. Interesting, okay. So how difficult was it to get it in there? Very. Very? Yeah, Very. Once we actually started it, yeah. it was... I'm gonna guess and assume that the tilt idea was his. Nope. To tilt the motor, set the transit down? Nope. Ah. We, we had been thinking about it since like before we started, and then we started thinking about like actually having to do it from the bottom because that made more sense. But then since then, more, when we had like more muscle power, we were able to like- Actually get it to angle. Actually like get it. it to tilt. And then he was like, yeah, just tilt it. All right, yeah, you're right. We can do that now. So. <laughs> hey guys, that is all we're gonna have for you guys today is getting the motor. I wish I could have filmed it, but unfortunately Ian and I were too busy going and getting the starter for this thing as among a few other odds and ends ordered that we definitely need for this car to run so while i'm sad i missed that birthing of the car and it getting its motor put in i mean i'm still happy that it's there now i'm left with the difficult annoying job <laughs> of putting all the wires back together which would normally be easy except i didn't take this car apart so i have no idea where anything goes so Wish me luck, guys, as <laughs> I figure this out because this is going to get interesting. And on that note, God bless you guys. I will see you next time. Peace.